You're watching an episode of Spirits People Live with Johnny Michelson. All right, there we go. Happy Spirits Tuesday. Let's see if we get some, some traction here on this wonderful Tuesday where we're going to do a live tasting of a couple of pretty hardcore bourbons. So yeah, we'll see what happens. So while hopefully some people are gonna pop in here, I'll just do a little bit of a presentation. So I got the George T. Stag from 2018 and have the Blanton's straight from the barrel. And this is, let's see, barrel number 894. Whiskey Novice, what's going on? Thanks for popping in. Whiskey Sorensen, what's going on, what's going on? The Rummery. So to the Rummery, today is a bourbon edition of Spirits Tuesday. Cheers, Whiskey Sorensen. Um, are you... I always forget, are you in Norway or in Sweden? There's a couple of couple of people I follow that are also Scandinavian. So yeah, today is gonna to be a tasting of these two bottles. So it's gonna be a solo episode. It's gonna be me, myself, and my two friends here. Um, whiskey novice, yeah, 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 for sure. Going to work. Oh wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> friends in Norway. All right, cool. All right, whiskey novice. Hang around for as long as you can. I'll get into the tasting in a second. Um, and yeah, you can always watch it on replay. It's gonna be up on YouTube in a couple of days as well. So you can, you can check it out there. So I have, um, as I said earlier, so I have these two glasses here. And uh, I poured them about 20 minutes ago because I do like to, when I do a tasting, I do like to let them sit and breathe for a bit. So what I've done is I've poured them into these and these are tasting glasses. So for some of you who, who kind of uh, pop in on a, on a regular basis, you'll notice that I use the tasting glasses and not Glencairns for drinking. And um, I kind of prefer these because you can get your hand in here and you can kind of, you can heat it up. So I like to control the, the heat of, of what I'm drinking so that I can get the best out of um, every kind of tasting. And sometimes when, when you go to tastings, uh, when you're not in your house and you go somewhere, it can be a little bit cold or you can be in a big room where there's um, some drafts and stuff like that. And the stuff you're drinking is is not as, as close to room temperature as you want it to be. And if you have a Glencairn, you kind of have this weird, weird way of holding it and it's harder for you to hold it and, and warm it up at the same time unless you sit like this and kind of cradle it for a bit. So what I like to do is use the tasting glasses, which actually is what most um, distilleries that I know of at least use when they do blends and stuff. They have this whole big circle table of these glasses. Um, so it's less of a tulip shape and more like a I don't even know what these shapes are called, but it doesn't kind of edge out. It kind of angles in. So it's much more focused and you can get a lot more out of the nose, if you will. Um, so yeah, I like to use these glasses. I do have Glencairns and I I do like them. They're, they're kind of nice to look at. So I do have a few of those as well, but I, I tend to use these. Um, cool. So today will be, as I mentioned, just myself. So I'll do this tasting. And then at the end, I will do the weekly giveaway because it is Spirits Tuesday and uh, you guys have been putting out some posts and putting the double bottle shots out there using the hashtag Spirits Tuesday. So, I can't hear what I'm saying. So, uh, this is a tote bag that I'm giving away for free every single week. So, um, if you join the hashtag you will have a chance to win one of these. And um, yeah, if you join once, you will have the chance to win every week. But obviously if you join more than once, you'll have a bigger chance of winning. So there's that. All right, cool. So 
I'm trying to figure out which one I should start with. Um, so usually I like to start with the one that's lower proof, which in this case is the stag. So the stag, let's see here, it is 124.9 proof. However, I have a feeling that this here is quite a bit older. I actually uh, should have done some homework here. I actually don't know how old the, the stag expressions are, but based on the color, I would say that it is a little bit older than straight from the barrel here, which is 126.7 proof. So um, just about 1% higher in ABV or just about. Gussie, what's going on, man? Straight from Jamaica. We're doing a bourbon tasting. So I'm just kind of going through the different, uh, the different bottles here. So I think I'm gonna start with the blends. So I've had quite a few Blantons over the, over the years and I find the straight from the barrel being the one with the most variation. So all Blantons are single barrels, which means that um, there are always gonna be some variations. And you have different expressions. You have the reserve, you have the regular ones, you have the gold, and then you have this one. And then they also have some, uh, some special releases, some barrel picks and stuff like that. So, um, so yeah, they're always gonna be a little bit different, but I find that within those ranges, if you will, so within the range of the gold, I always find that the gold tend to be quite, quite good at being consistent across all the different uh, barrels, whereas um, the straight from the barrel tends to be the one with the most kind of variance. And probably because of the higher or because it's straight from the barrel, they don't dilute it down um, in any way to kind of control the taste and the flavor. Uh, it's probably like a natural thing that this is a little bit more varied. But anyway, so both, what did I say? Both Buffalo Trace um, stuff as well. All right, so I'm gonna, this here has been sitting, so this is actually room temperature, so I'm not gonna, not gonna spend a lot of time kind of heating it up. Hmm. So I don't know if it's, you guys can see, but it's very, very oily in the glass. All right, man. Whiskey Sorensen, thanks for popping in. Let's go. So yeah, it's quite oily and not surprisingly such this George T. Stag is also very oily. So these are high proof stuff. So there's a lot of, and they are non chill filtered. So all the oils and stuff hasn't been filtered out of these. So I think straight away what I get from this Blanton's is kind of a dark caramel, which is kind of a typical, typical bourbon note or flavor or aroma, if you will. And um, yeah, definitely getting this. I'm getting like, I'm getting a lot of it. I'm getting a lot of it. It's extremely dominant. Yeah, it's like 80% 80, 80 of the aroma is like that caramel. Then like on top of that, there's a little bit of, there's some vanilla notes that kind of, adds to that caramel that makes it a little bit more sweeter. Sometimes the caramel can be almost like a burnt caramel, but this one here has that kind of nice vanilla -y note that kind of follows. So it makes it a nice and sweet, not like a toffee, but still, still a dark caramel. Um, and then it has a lot of orange kind of oils or orange zest, which I, I really enjoy, I quite like spirits that have that, and not just not just whiskeys, any kind of spirits that has a kind of orangey, um, like aroma and, 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 and profile to it. <sighs> so when I do, and, and I'll, I'll, just, I'll just jab away here because I, there's, no, there's no real agenda except for me like doing this tasting and um, ask any questions if you have any um, to both the bottles or like what I'm doing here happy to to answer that so i just wanted to do a little bit of a tasting because i do have 
Um, I do have something else that comes out um, besides just these Tuesday sessions. Um, and it involves these kind of tastings. So, um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions or any thoughts. So in terms of tasting, so my, so when I do these, if I just taste one or two or, or like a whole flight, what I do is like, I tend to nose my way through all of them to kind of get a sense of where the different spirits sit. And sometimes you do a flight that's not just um, this is bourbon to bourbon, but sometimes you have like a Japanese whiskey sitting next to an Irish whiskey sitting next to a scotch and a bourbon and then you kind of need to I don't know adjust yourself to the landscape if you will. So I'm gonna do some some nosing of the the stag as well before I dive into it just to kind of get a, an idea of, of where the two sit and also I tend to nose things twice because the first impression you kind of get those bigger and sweeter notes. So the nose and, and your um, your taste buds initially will always capture something that's sweet. It's just the way that we work, which is why we're addicted to sweet shit like candy and stuff like that, um, because that's naturally what we like. So always when you smell things the first time, you usually get more of those sweet notes. Second time, you may be able to then start going down a little bit and, and find um, some additional things that may have been hidden underneath those um, those sweet notes. So anyway, so I'm on the stag. And instantly it's, it's kind of a darker profile. There's a lot more. This here is very oak, oak forward. Um, so talking about the age, likely that this is this is much older. It's much more dark. It's like oak, raisins. Again, there's the caramel, but it's not as not as dominant as it is on the Blantons, but it's very similar. It's similar, but it's not as, as kind of overwhelming. Like the Blantons was almost overwhelmingly um, caramelly on the nose, whereas this one here has that same aroma profile but it's it's kind of it's balanced out with some oak some raisins <sighs> some some cocoa nips again it has that kind of orange zest orange why can't i say orange today <laughs> orange or i can't say it orange zest um or orange peel let's say it that way it's easier for me to say uh so orange peel kind of you know, in order to make an old-fashioned, you kind of twist and you get those oils. It has it has some of that. And those are all, so for me, those are all profiles um, or those are all like tasting notes that I really enjoy, which is why I got obsessed with American whiskey um, about five, six, maybe seven years ago. So those are all things that I'll, I'll pick up and I'll, I'll usually just instantly um, gravitate toward those those things. And a lot of American whiskeys will have those notes. And I guess part of what I'm trying to figure out as part of my next step on this journey is like, how can you, how can you specify when you have those notes and you have some other notes, like why you like certain things and, and maybe why you don't. So I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do more of these tastings to kind of take myself onto that next, next part of my journey. There's some figs and stuff. There's some like some dark fruits, um, some dark fruits on this word on, on as well. But a lot of them, except for maybe the oak, but a lot of these other notes again, like has that kind of sweetness to it. Ah, it's good. I will say out of the two, so just from the first uh, nosing, I'll say the Blantons, is extremely straightforward. It's it's really, really nice. It's very caramelly, very sweet um, with some vanilla tones and stuff like that. The George T. Stag is also very nice in my opinion, but it's more complex and it's also more interesting. So while the Blantons in my mind is very straightforward, it's something that I think if you like bourbon, you would instantly just like this. It's nice and it's easy, it's approachable. And this is just from the nose. Whereas the stag, 
it comes across as more complex. It has some of those, um, those nice classic typical bourbon notes to it, but it adds something to the mix, which is probably why it's um, hard to get because it is really good. And last year's, um, and, and no spoiler alerts here, but I have revealed that last year's stag, which is this one, was my favorite out of the uh, BTAC range. So it's no, it's no surprise that I find this that I find this very nice, but also very complex and something that it, it's, it has stuff to give. It doesn't just like sit there. It's, it's really, it's really inviting you in. It's like, Hey, come, let's, let's explore this together. So, all right, I'm going to jump back to the Blanton's gene what's going on. So we got Northern bourbon in the house. So I'm, I'm doing my, my tasting here. So I have the, you'll recognize this bottle. So a Blanton's straight from the barrel doing a side-by-side -side tasting with the 2018 George T. Stag. So what I've done is I've just nosed the two. The chart cask, Jeremy, what's going on? So I've just nosed the two. And uh, I'm just trying to like establish the landscape of, of these two and, and where they kind of sit. And the conclusion from the initial nosing of these two is that the Blanton's, although it's, although the Blanton's is actually like about 1% higher in the ABV, feels like a lower and more approachable bourbon. Whereas the Stag is much more complex, but has still some of those kind of classic notes. So yeah, I'm going to go in for the first kind of nose slash taste, which I like to call my step two. So step one, always like nose stuff, get all the sweetness out, all the sweet notes. And then second nose, trying to see, trying to see what lies behind those kind of sweeter notes that you, you tend to always um, extract in the first, first kind of attempt of, of nosing stuff. Here we go. I think there's a red fruit stuff in there, some some raspberries maybe. Yeah, a little bit more of a not a sweet, not a sweet raspberry, but almost that tangy, tangy raspberry kind of sharp. It kind of sits underneath that sweet, sweet, sweet caramel and vanilla and orange peel and stuff like that. Time to get some cloves. This is also a very classic uh, bourbon bourbon note. So some cloves in there. I want to almost say that the orange stuff that I got before kind of now feels a little bit more like a like a lemon. It's a little bit it's a little bit sharper. So here's what we're gonna do. So each nostril, um, and this is this is. I think is probably true for everyone. So my left nostril is much better at picking up citrus stuff. So on the right hand side, I'll get a lot of like sweetness. On the left hand side, I'll get a lot of those kind of more sharp and, and citrusy notes. I'll, I'll, I'll give this a go. Yeah, it's definitely a, it's definitely a lemon now. Yeah, the orange stuff is kind of I think what I'm thinking orange is I think that's the caramel kind of the caramel and vanilla blended in. All right, Department of Whiskey has joined. What's going on, buddy? So we got some Blanton straight from the barrel. I'm doing a side by side with George T. Stag 2018. So I'm just about to do the first sip of this. <sighs> yeah, and this one I, I made a mistake there, so I put my nose a little bit too far in. So these are these are cast strength. So it's gonna burn your <laughs> it's gonna burn your nose if you if you're not careful. So yeah, it's hard to see like if you go from a from a side side kind of perspective, you can see like I'm not like dropping my nose in in these glasses, but yeah, I just did that and that was a mistake. <sighs> yeah, raspberries. All right, cool. So first, first sip of of this amazing dram. Let's see what it has. To, let's see what it has to offer. All 
Oh man, that is good. Oh. Oh, that lingers. Yeah, so. There is the oak. There was very little oak on this one on the nose. Compared to the stag, at least, the stag had like much, much, much more on that oaky kind of aged flavor profile to it. Whereas the Blanton's kind of came off as almost like a young bottle and bond, kind of very sweet bourbon there. But now, now that's gone. Now here's the maturity coming out. Like there's the oak. It's no, there's no tannins. It's not bitter. It's not drying. Although the alcohol will, it is probably it pretty high proof. The alcohol does dry it a little bit, but it's also quite oily, so you don't really feel that dryness. So sometimes when you drink like these super strength, super high strength alcohols, it almost feels like it's it's sucking out all of the moisture from your entire mouth, which which can be unpleasant. Um, but yeah, this one here has enough oil and viscosity in it for it to actually feel feel really, really nice. So a lot of oak on the front. The caramel and vanilla are there. It's like there's more. The caramel has kind of gone and, and blended itself on, on the palate with the oak. So the oak and the caramel now kind of becomes a little bit more joint, which is good because it makes it more balanced. And the vanilla kind of stands out a little bit more. There are some cloves kind of lingering. And I think maybe cloves or maybe maybe actually Maybe actually this is a black, like a black pepper, so or like a cracked black pe pepper. It's a little bit of bitterness on that. And I want to say it's the cloves, but I think it's the pepper on the finish. The cloves kind of sit in the mid palate there. So it kind of sits and mingles nicely with the, with the vanilla and the nice sweet kind of caramel and oaky stuff. And now because, and I always I find this in tasting, so once you've taken the first sip, even if this is high proof, you can get your nose further down the glass because you've, you've adjusted to that, that alcohol now, which I find really, I find that really interesting. It's almost like you're, you become immune to that, that thing that kind of sits and you get it up up front. But once you've, you've tried and tested that first sip, you can you can you can approach it a little bit more aggressively if you want interesting it lingers for a bit it doesn't actually linger for too long which i think is i think is interesting because normally i find and it's been a while since I've done these tastings, so like, yeah, maybe it's just like because I don't pay attention to it because I like to enjoy my whiskey. I don't do, I don't do too many of these kind of tastings, which is why I'm 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 starting this now, and then I'm gonna add, I'm gonna talk about this in a couple of weeks. I'm not quite ready yet, but I'm gonna talk about more tasting focused um, aspects of of spirits, people. So Northern Bourbon, same thoughts from price point perspective. So in the UK, you can get a bottle of Blanton's straight from the barrel for about, I want to say 85 pounds, sometimes, sometimes cheaper, depends. Um, and I think for that, it's an absolutely incredible bourbon. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't let it sit on a shelf. Um, unfortunately, I have to because... <laughs> Can't buy it all, but yeah, I've I've bought quite a few of uh, of Blanton's, including a couple of the La Maison de Whiskey ones uh, from uh, Whiskey.fr. So the big the big um, French uh, spirits spirit shops, and they they've done some amazing picks. However, the ones I got was the barrel sitting right next to some of those picks, which they also had. So I got some of those. I wasn't, I wasn't fortunate enough to get um, the actual store picks. So I bought two bottles of that. And uh, yeah, they're absolutely amazing. And if you can find it for 
I want to say if you can find it for less than a hundred pounds, I would I would buy it. I would buy it easy. Frank the Tank, what is going on? Really enjoyed your live stream. All right, cool man. Thanks for popping in. You can always catch it, catch it on replay. It's gonna be up on YouTube in a couple of days as well, so you can go and and, and check it out if you want. You don't have to. <laughs> Thanks anyway. All right, so. George T. Stag. All right, Perpetual Netar is joining us. What's going on, my friend? So I'm on my my first taste of the Stag. So I've just done the nosing of the two. So the Blanton straight from the barrel, the George T. Stag 2018. So I nosed them both. Had the first sip and um, kind of second nosing of the Blanton's, and now I'm going in for the first sip of the George T. Stag, which is a little bit darker. And again, I mentioned at the beginning, I don't actually know the age of, of any of these, but judging by the color alone, which you shouldn't always do, but judging by the color, I'd say the Stag is older, which, which makes sense. And um, it's also more complex. <sighs> The sec second nosing here, the oak is still there. The oak is actually a little bit more dominant now. It feels like it's almost it's almost taken over the caramel. The caramel is still there, but it's hiding a little bit. So I'm gonna I'm gonna s jump in here. Oh, wow. That's such a well-balanced bourbon. You would never know that this is a 62 proof or 62 ABV. I'm amazed. And this is probably one of the reasons why I like it so much. It's because of the balance. Like previous editions or, or previous releases of the George C. Stag. I did not like. I will have to like. I I like going back to them, but in reality, I feel like they're just so powerful, and by creating such a powerful bourbon, they've lost some of that balance. And I feel like the 2018 release just kind of took it back a little bit. It's it's a lower proof than many of the previous years, and it's just such an incredible, incredibly well balanced bourbon. So it's quite oily. It's not as drying actually as the Blanton's, although the Blanton wasn't super drying, but it's very oily, which makes it very pleasant to drink, which is also probably why it feels more balanced because it doesn't overpower you with the alcohol content. It kind of gives you the chance to enjoy the mouthfeel and you get a lot of the, you get a lot of the oak on the palate, but it almost feels like it has a, I want to say like a, like a melted butter coating to it. And I, I feel like that's a note I sometimes go to when I'm trying to figure out what that, that is. But melted butter is kind of the thing that I, I can relate to is like, you have something really like a, a, a nice steak. I love a good steak. Um, so a steak on, on the pan there with butter melting on top of that and you get all of those flavor and the butter is what kind of kind of hits your nostrils and that's kind of the the thing that I'm getting with this and it's it's just so I hate the word smooth but it's like it's smooth <laughs> it's amazing it's great yeah and then behind there sits some there's some cinnamon Again, there's the raisins. It's almost like a, there's a nuttiness to it, but it's not, maybe it's like a, it's like a, oh, it's, all, it's not a nut. It's almost like a pine cone, the pine cone in here. It's like, 
It's a foresty type, not the oakiness, not the nuttiness, but something that feels like it sits in between there. I feel like it's kind of a pine cone thing. It almost feels briny to some degree, but very lightly. It's, it's, it's very well balanced, but it has almost like a little brininess on, on, on the palette there. I've actually, I've, I've never, I've never noticed that before. I'm, I'm excited here. <laughs> if you couldn't tell. Department of Whiskey is saying couldn't agree more about the GTS. Dude, it's such a well-balanced beast. I'm, I'm amazed. Absolutely amazed. Alan M. Kane, welcome. We're doing a tasting and I'm just, I'm just done with the second taste of, or actually first taste of the George T. Stag. This is the 2018 release. And before that, we had the Blanton's straight from the barrel. These are similar proofs, which is why I wanted to do these two. And they're also both from Buffalo Trace. And um, what I wanted to try and figure out is how different are these two? Because obviously the stag is part of the antique collection, really, really hard to get uh, on a global scale. The Blanton's, although impossible to find in the US to some degree, unless you know someone who knows someone, um, everywhere else is, is easier to get um, than the stag. I'm not saying it's easy, it's easier. Um, but yeah, the two are, they're similar, but not a lot, actually, not a lot. So I'll say from first nosing, first taste. Yeah, they're, they're not, they're not alike at all. Which barrel is the Blanton's? So this is from, this is from the 14th of July, 2017. It's barrel number 894. And it is 126.7 proof. Northern Bourbon, glad I know a guy. <laughs> Pleasure doing business. So, um, yeah, really interesting. So I think like, to be completely frank, I have not had this, um, this particular bottle of Blanton's for a while. And I actually find it to be not boring, but very straightforward. And um, I don't know if you want to pay 100, 100 pounds for something that's or $100 for something that's straightforward. It's a very, very good bourbon, don't get me wrong. But when you compare and you, you draw references to something else, it's always a good idea to, to try to figure out what is it that you like as an individual. And like some of the stuff that I like is that something that surprises me and invites me in for more, which I feel like this Blanton's, although it does it on a, on a lower level, like the stag absolutely does that. It, it keeps me wanting more. I want to go back to it, but now I'm going to, I'm going to have another sip of this to see if, if there's something else hiding in here. But yeah, it's, it's a very straightforward bourbon, which, uh, which a lot of the other Blanton's are as well. Like the, the gold is, I love the Blanton's gold, but it's again, like the Blanton's gold for me is very straightforward. I would say I was, I was actually surprised by this because this now, and I'm trying to figure out like, am I, am I over, am I over these things? I hope not. <laughs> So the age, so Department of Whiskey, any idea of the age of the Blanton? I, this is always a tricky one. It is a tricky one. I want to say that it's probably eight to 10, something like that, eight to 10 years old. I feel like there's, and obviously barrel to barrel is different, but this barrel here feels like there's a very little oak on the nose and like the more oak it has up front, I feel like you kind of, you kind of sense that aging of it, but it did have, I'm going to go in here. It did have that oak kind of coming out of the bushes on, on the palette.
All right. Yeah, it feels a bit. Feels a bit more mature now. And then, and to be fair, I did pour these about 20 minutes before I started the stream. So they have had a chance to sit and, and air a little bit. But obviously, like when you, when you do like a real, real kind of in-depth tasting, like you tend to spend more time with it. But I think in a realistic term and, and realistic scenario, we'd never really sit and, and have every single thing that you try for like an hour or two. Like you try most of these things, like maybe you'll have a sip, maybe you'll have a dram or two. So you kind of need to, if you're exploring, you're trying to discover stuff, you're trying to discover things about yourself, that kind of curiosity that drives you wanting to try new spirits. If you're in that kind of category, which I definitely am, yeah, you spend maybe about an hour sipping on something. And if you're really intrigued, maybe you pour yourself some more and you spend like an evening, but not on everything you taste, which which obviously would be great, but then you wouldn't have time to taste everything that you want. So, um, so yeah. Bobby is joining us. What's going on, man? Got another Canadian amongst us. So yeah, more, more oak. Second, second taste here on the Blanton's. A lot more oak is coming through. So I think, yeah, what I said before, I wouldn't say you strike that, but I'd say that it's still very straightforward, uh, which, which I'm surprised. I'm surprised that it's actually this straightforward. But again, I am also comparing it. I'm not comparing it directly, but I am sipping on it like right next to the, the George C. Stag, which is one of my favorite from last year. So I might not be doing it any justice, but, um, but yeah, we have to have, we have to talk about something. So there we go. <laughs> Bobby is snowed in. Jesus. Grab yourself a bottle, bro. <laughs> Good drinking. When life gives you lemons or whatever, send some GTS. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure it'll get there in time. How, how long is it going to be snowing for? I guess you're in Canada, so it could be months, right? So, George Teasdag. A lot more red fruits is coming through now. The first, the first kind of nosing and tasting, there was a lot of oak. It kind of transitioned from like very oaky with a little bit of caramel and then into the first sip where I felt the caramel and the oak kind of merged. The vanilla kind of shined, shined through a little bit more. There was some cinnamon in the back there. Raspberries. And yeah, then it's like, some of that black pepper maybe also, yeah. All right, so a second. Bobby is having some straight from the barrel. Well, good on you, man. All right, so second taste here. Okay, a lot more, a lot more of that black pepper is coming through. Yeah, it's a lot more, I want to say black pepper is like that bitterness. It kind of gives you, imagine like taking a, a peppercorn and kind of chewing on it. Almost like a salmiaki licorice or something like that. But it's definitely the pepper because salmiaki is a little bit, it's a little bit different. I actually quite, I, I love Salmia. I'm Scandinavian, so like black licorice is, is my thing. But the thing I can't do is have licorice and then drink whiskey, because that does not mix. So uh, yeah, separate, separate on that. Like if I taste Salmiaki in my, in my spirits, it's not for me. It's one of those, those notes that I cannot, I cannot drink. I'll eat it all day and it's a terrible bad habit. You shouldn't eat candy all day. It's not good for you. But as soon as that appears in a drink, I'm, I'm out. I can't do it. Oh, man. All right, so let's 
trying to see if we can get something with the color here. So we got the stag over here. I don't know if it's clear on on there, but there is definitely a little bit of a color difference. The stag is definitely more mature. And I'm not sure. So I, I would say eight to 10. Someone on here said it was maybe 10 to 12. And like, I don't know. Regardless, it's it's an amazing dram. I think out of these two, what I've mentioned before, it's more straightforward. It's it's easier to approach. It's it's not that this is not complex, but like I'm purely just looking at these two together. So what I'm gonna do now is I am going to take an empty glass and I'm gonna pour them both in here. So here we go. There goes the stag. Nice to meet you. And got the straight from the barrel going straight into this glass as well. So the reason I'm taking an empty glass is so that I don't get any of the aromas from the glasses because they've been sitting for a while now. So now I kind of, I have an entire new dram, which is called the George T. Blantons that I've just created. And I'm going to see if, not just if, I'm going to see what of the characteristics from these two that are going to come through. And uh, yeah, I have my, and this is, this is always fun. I, I love doing this. So in terms of, of, of blending these together, what I normally would do though, I would, I would blend these and I would let it sit for 20 minutes, but this is live. So here we go. Let these swirl for a bit. What's everyone drinking? Oh, Bobby, you're having some straight from the barrel. So you got about, you got half of what I have in here. <laughs> Cleansing your palate between sips. So that's a very good point. I do have some water here because I've been tasting these two and I had a little, little sip before I started the live stream and I had a big chuck of water just to kind of kind of separate my, my my brain into the two different bottles so if I would do a longer tasting I would definitely I would start um, cleansing my palate I'm gonna do it now because now I have probably a new a new whiskey hopefully and what I also have is this so I sometimes add a couple of drops of um, purified water into these kind of cask strength spirits and uh i'll probably do this but not right now i want to kind of i want to get the two raw bourbons in the glass to marry up for a bit and then i'll try that and then i'll add some water to see if that changes that as well i want to i want to see like what are the what are the notes from the different two that comes through and also sometimes what you get is you get something completely new you get a new tasting like maybe i'll taste bananas right now and I, i'm not sure I doubt it, but there's always a, a science, right? <laughs> we just don't know. So, uh, <sighs> it's very, it's quite oaky. I feel like the George T. Stag is taking the nose here. It's got some of that. Some of the oakiness on the nose that the Blantons didn't really have. Although the Blantons kind of came through. So on the palate, it was a lot more oaky, but kind of a sweet oakiness. And the stag, what the stag was doing is that oakiness kind of carried through. But then the caramel started coming through, merging in with that. And then the vanilla was shining out. So interesting to see what's coming out of this glass now. Oh, wow. So actually, I got distracted. I did not clean my palate. I did not have a glass of water. However, this is incredible. <laughs> this is this is some good stuff. 
A lot of spiciness is coming through now. I feel like the pepper from the stag is kind of amplified from some of the cloves, maybe. Yeah, it's almost like the peppers and the cloves, the pepper from the stag, the cloves from the Blantons is taken over a little bit, like those bitter notes. But they're not just bitter, they're kind of, they're spicy. A lot of oak as well. Very little caramel now, actually. There's very little caramel on this. It's sweet, but it's a vanilla sweetness. So maybe the vanilla from the stag is, is, is the sweetness that's carried over because the caramel doesn't seem to really be there. It's oak and vanilla. And as I was, your straight from the barrel is spicy. Nice one. So maybe the, maybe the spice in like maybe what I didn't get, and I'll have to go back to the Blantons here that I have, like maybe, maybe those cloves notes that I was getting was a spiciness, but it didn't pick up the spiciness when I was drinking it on its own. But I feel like the, the kind of bitter peppery notes I was getting from the stag is, is coming through, but it has the, the cloves kind of sensation, has some vanilla on there, and then it's oak but no caramel. That's interesting. I'm gonna, gonna cleanse out here. All right, so water. So adding water to your spirits, I'm all for it. I don't tend to do it when stuff is not super high proof. This is obviously very high proof, so we'll add some water. I'll add about four drops or so. There we go. Just a little bit. We'll swirl that around. And then we'll see what happens. I love these little dropper bottles. Like maybe I'll start doing something with these. These are kind of cool. Everyone should have one of these. Like it's easier to control what you put in your glass, especially if you're trying to like really explore, really like get your way into something. Like if you just have like a finger or a spoon and stuff like that, it kind of like you have no, you have no control. Like these little, everyone should have one of these or something similar. I've seen there's some, there's some other stuff. All right. Perpetual Nectar is saying, always add water to cast strength stuff. Yeah. I wouldn't say it always, ma always makes it better, but I do find that I always do it. I always add water to it, but I always try it raw first, like put it in the glass, try it a few times, and then you start adding water to try to like explore a little bit, discover something. Um, and most distilleries or most uh, blenders and stuff like that, when they do their blending, they'll dilute stuff down to like a very low ABV so that they can start finding all the flaws and stuff. I'm not necessarily interested in that, but I found it really interesting when I, when I heard that um, that's what they do. Because then you can start tasting the stuff that you don't want in your, in your bourbon, at least. I don't know if with, with other spirits. But... Um, but yeah, they diluted it down. I think it was, was it Elmer T. Lee that put seven up in his, his stuff when he was tasting, I think. Um, not entirely sure. <laughs> Alan, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, this is actually, this is super old. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find some time to create a new one because this is the old kind of logo that I've done, which is kind of shit, but <laughs> I had a hat done. Um, great merch. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm making some t-shirts. So, so today is a, um, a solo episode. Of course, it's just me, myself and my friends, George and Blanton. But usually there's a, 
there's other people on these shows and um what i do is i give everyone who's on these shows a t-shirt with the spirits people live logo on it as a thank you for being on um and sharing sharing their stories so uh, they haven't been made yet they're they're in the making um but yeah that's 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 a merch but that's a specific design that you cannot buy you can only receive it from me if you join these live sessions so if anyone ever wants to join uh <laughs> gene yeah gene we're due you need to uh you need to get your your face on the camera and go live with me and then uh, then we'll we'll see what happens Starting to get some red fruits. Some of those raspberry notes I was getting before kind of. Oh, this hat is it's a one of a kind. There is only one in the world. And it's getting a it's getting a little bit grotty. It's one of those like trucker style hat as well, which I don't necessarily like. I, I may or may not have been slightly buzzed when I ordered this, so <laughs> it wasn't the one that I wanted, but it was the one that I got. So um there's there's a lesson. Lesson in there somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Mm. A little bit of a Kentucky chew. Always do that, people. Always. Don't squish it around. Slowly chew on it. Make sure you coat everything. Get the... Get all the different taste buds covered each taste bud can only taste one thing so you have to cover everything <sighs> some of that caramel is coming back now and to be fair as I, was, as I was saying before like when i do these and i blend them together i normally let it sit for about for about 20 minutes because when you do blend things it's a little bit of a it's a little bit of a shock a shock to the spirits all the molecules have to kind of mix in with each other so after about 20 minutes i find that you can start to get some of that combined effort if you will obviously if you can let if, if you can and people do this with like poor man's pappy and stuff like if you can let it sit for a week or two and like go and shake it every now and then and then like you'll you'll get a little bit more i find that after a couple of weeks it, it doesn't make a difference so if you have the patience and the spirits to to do these kind of things like yeah definitely definitely try and also like try it along the way see what happens that's that's the beauty of it like the curiosity i find is 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 what drives me at least into into trying all these different things and and which is why i'm starting to do these these kind of tasting things so yeah caramel is coming back oak is still there bitterness and spiciness kind of mellowed down a little bit it's still there but less less like a punch in the face or in the mouth in this case so the peppery notes cloves they were quite intense as i just blended these but now i find like they're they're finding their place they're trying to balance themselves out it seems which is a good thing because yeah, before it was yeah, it was a little bit off balance. But yeah, I find that that these are these are getting along. This is like I this is a great pour. I would drink this any day. <laughs> this is excellent. This is amazing. <sighs> All right, guys. Cool. I see the clock is running out here, so I have about I have a few minutes left and I do want to get to my my Spirits Tuesday giveaway. So um, because it's just me, I'm going to need some help from someone out there. Whoever is whoever's there, put a hand up and I'll pick someone who gets to pick a number for this week's winner of the tote bag. Northern Bourbon saying I'm becoming a master blender. Well, that's not the worst title to have. So I'll take that. So, who
Who wants to? Who wants to? Who wants to? All right, Alan M. Kane. Let's do it. So I need you to give me a number between two and 38, both numbers included. So this is my spreadsheet. I'll bring it up when we randomize it, just so there's no cheating. So Alan, if you want to give me a number between two and 38, both numbers included, then we will uh, we will draw a winner. Whenever you're ready. And cheers, guys. Cheers for for hanging out. I enjoyed this. Alan saying 27. All right, cool. Here we go. Before we run out of time. So let's see if I can get up close. So we have the spreadsheet here. So you can see how many how many times people have actually joined. So the more times you join, the more of a chance you'll have to win. So I have to now hit this magic random button here. So here we go. So everyone can see randomizes. And we find number 27. Whiskey hype. Boom. Whiskey hype. There we go. Congratulations. Amazing. Whiskey hype. This week's winner of the Spirits People tote bag. And I will fold it out just because, because I can, because I have it. There we go. This is what you've won, Whiskey Hype. This will be in the mail to you very soon. I am I'm waiting for the mailman to actually bring me my, my box of these. So it might take, <laughs> might take a couple of weeks, but nonetheless, it will arrive in due time. So that's it, Whiskey Hype, congratulations. Alan, thank you so much for picking the, the winner this week. And uh, yeah, everyone, thanks for hanging out. There's a couple of Canadians in here. Thanks for, for popping in. I know that um, it's probably early over there. So I don't know what I don't know what everyone here is doing, what kind of jobs you have and if you're actually working or should be working. Uh, but yeah, truly appreciate it. And uh, if you have any thoughts, any feedback on, on this kind of session where I do these tastings and a blending, um, please let me know. Hit me up on Instagram, send me a DM and, and, and give me your thoughts. I really appreciate that. So yeah, I think that's it. Everyone have a wonderful day. Happy Spirits Tuesday and uh, I will see you next week. Peace. <music>